said about Beverly, uh, we'll sing our last hymn that's going to be guiding me for that. Thank you. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. The late Mr. Lawrence Isabwa, popularly known as Openin, close family also called him Openin Edibofo, was born in Kumasi on January 10, 1969. To Mr. Bernard Nisakwa and Madame Agnes Watson, both of Les Morris. He was the second of five siblings. He started his education at State Experimental Primary School and continued to Okuara Secondary School, in which he completed in 1986. He then moved to Accra to join his uncle in running his business. He worked with him for about a year and later traveled to Belgium. He then proceeded to the United Kingdom in 1987, where he decided to settle and continue with his life. Opening was friendly, outgoing, kind-hearted, selfish and showed genuine love for everyone he encountered. He used to come to Ghana for holidays. He met his wife in Ghana, a Rajwa Che Mesa, who later joined him in the United Kingdom. He were blessed with three beautiful children, a beautiful girls. Nana Kukia Kriye Safwa, a Ra Aduma Safwa, and Mami Kunedu in support. He visited his sisters in the US in 2004. He had always loved to further his education. He went on to study at the University of East London, where he studied business and information systems. He worked with an IT firm for a while, but due to his love for his children, he later went to work with children with special needs. The sudden death which occurred on, man, on November 16, 2021 took everybody by surprise. As the saying goes, to everything there is a season, a time to be born, a time a, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to plow, and a time to win, and a time to love. Opani, you are gone, but not forgotten. May the Almighty God grant you a good resting place in his kingdom. We will never forget you. Rest well. You shall always remain in our heart. In addition to my little Sinda Dalu, words cannot express the sorrow I feel on the person of my younger brother, Florence Sapphire. I will forever be grateful to have had the opportunity to witness such a greatness, such a new, our school table tennis legend, a great asset to our family. Very generous and to feel the warmth of his smile. It was my honor to stand next to him to celebrate an amorous occasion on contrary to his untimely demise. He lit up every room he walked into. May his beloved family, friends, find comfort in knowing how profoundly his acts imparted our culture. 
and as all, I will receive my brother. Thank you, brother. To everything there's a season, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck, a time to weep, and a time to love. And this time is a morning time, a time of grieving. We pray that the strength of the Lord would engulf the family and the friends at this difficult time. Shall we stand and sing our next hymn? Guide me, O thou great people.
from afar in my mini dress and asks Nephia, who is this girl? I really like her. I was supposed to love at first sight. And the rest, they say, is history. <laughs> to the world, you were just one person. And to me, you were my world already. <laughs> and the moment I was broken, <laughs> I'm floating in the sea of misery. But I know the good Lord is in control. Amen. Time does not help as everyone likes to believe. But time accommodates. And I know time will make the pain bearable. Christmas was your thing. And last Christmas wasn't the same without you. For the girls and I. Each year, you used to buy more decorations, and whenever I questioned your actions, you used to say you were a Dadaba, and because I'm a Jabba, my parents never decorated at Christmas. Then I will also respond by saying, a Kumasi boy calling me a girl from Teba, a Jabba, then the banter will go on and on. There was never a drama with you and friends. You were caring and selfless, and everyone who knew you would attest to it. You loved to do good things for people, but you were never a show off. Always happy to be at the background. You always wanted to make the girls and I happy by always putting us first. <laughs> we had our challenges, but our love for each other always prevailed. <laughs> you were my boyfriend as a raw second daughter. You used to refer you to me. <laughs> oh. My silent in Gongonza Batna. My number one cheerleader and my lover. Oh, I'm going to face the world without you. The thought of never seeing your impeccable presence when we go out. Your smile and your soft spoken voice is unbearable. You were a go getter and achieved all your dreams. Apart from walking your three beautiful princesses out there. Oh, how am I supposed to do that? You never made any decisions without informing me or consulting me first. You really valued my opinion and everything. To the extent that some friends will ask you, but aren't you the man you always respond by asking them if they will be able to help you pay your mortgage if you are in need. You also made them aware that I was your wife and you valued my opinion. Whenever I go out to visit my friends, you always shrug several times just to check up on me and to ensure I was okay. However, sometimes after the third or fourth ring, from you, I'll put my phone on mute or text you not to call again because they kept asking, oh, many wife, is he the only man who has a wife? Such was the kind of person you were. Oh, many, you were such a caring husband, father, and always made me feel special. Oh, many was my rock. When I got upset, he stayed calm. When I was worried, he said it would be okay. He was just calm. He was just that calm voice that made everything seem easy. I love to party, and you never had any issues with that. You were the first to tell me whether what I'm wearing is beautiful or not. 
Sometimes when I ask if what I'm wearing is too short or not, you respond by saying, I'm your husband and I'm fine with it. Who is going to zip up my dress already? And who is going to buckle my shoes on my dress? On weekends now I don't go out. You ask if I'm okay and when I ask why, you always reply, but today is Saturday. Then I will ask whether you are trying to get rid of me. Then the two of us will burst into laughter. I miss your dance. I miss our dance-offs. And as you and the girls used to say, you were the better dancer. You used to say that all I do was to pearl. Although I, oh, I it, although I never knew what that word meant. Man proposes and God disposes. Mm. The last day we spoke about on that faithful day was the birthday party we were going to attend on that weekend. Little did I know that you weren't going to be here. It was no word you said for what is this in November 2021. <laughs> when suddenly your heart is overrated. <laughs> the highly skilled medical team did their utmost best, but to no avail. God knows best. <laughs> In shock and total disbelief, I kept walking and crying around the world, asking each health professional if you were indeed gone to be with your maker. I just couldn't believe that my babes has left me and gone to be with my maker on that cold November afternoon. I always thought we were going to grow all together. You love children and would have been the best grandfather. I know tears are not enough, but in the scheme of things, it's my only option. I weep with my anguish and continue to weep on a huge void that can never be filled with your absence in our lives. Thank you for sharing this beautiful 28 years of your life with me, oh, I can't express just how much I miss you with words. My heart is broken, sleep well, and I always hold you in my heart until I hold you again in heaven. The year of it Senior pastor here. 
when that man was being diagnosed with cancer, I took them, I took him and his wife to Royal Mountain Hospital not too far from here. And I'm saying this to illustrate the fact that what can we learn from what Nanjua is going through with their daughters. And so as I parked outside of Royal Mountain Hospital and waiting for him and his wife to come and join me in my car after a lengthy consultation with the medics, I observed something that I've never forgotten, looking back to 2006. Every couple that came out of that gate, Royal Muslim Hospital, they were holding hands. Every couple. That's the, le the lesson I learned from that day was, I don't think they had always held hands. But when there was a threat to one of their lives, they started holding hands. I believe in this room will be a number of couples, maybe you are watching by the live stream, there are issues. Now, clearly, what our sister is sharing is that she wish this would be the case. But that is something that you and I cannot control. What can we learn? I'm asking this question. If there's an, if there's an element of reconciliation, if there's an opportunity to make up with that mother, with that father, with that brother, with that sister, with that husband, with that wife, why don't we? Amen? Amen? A number of tributes are going to be read. I'm going to invite the next one. And as they are reading, it's not just for us to hear what they are reading, but let's listen to their hearts and yet not just what they are going to say. Shall we have a tribute from the siblings? Yeah? After which uh, uh, the, the, the number of tributes will follow. Thank you.
want everybody to know this around. When we were growing up, uh, whenever we go, like, go and attempt to, you know, fight with other people, we will go behind him because we know he will, he will. Even though he doesn't, he's not strong enough, but, you know, when he sees you, you will think that he can do something, but he can't do nothing. <laughs> so that's how he was. But uh, I remember when I was in school, when I went to St. Louis Secondary School, and the moment my seniors heard my name, they were like, oh, is that him? Is that, is that his sister? So I saw that they were just, go they were bullying me a lot because of my brother's name and stuff. So I decided to disown him. I said, I don't know him. Then I, I told him, I said, don't come here. Don't come to my school because we know you and you're going to, you're going to put me in more trouble. I'm going to be bullied more. So he told me, okay. Then one day I saw him at the lobby. He's coming to visit me. I said, oh, said, what did you do? He said, well, you are my sister. You got to know that I have to come and see. So when they saw him, most of his seniors, classmates saw him, and they were like, oh, we knew that from him. We knew that it was his sister. But he's too she is too timid, so slow. So he told me, he said, you have to be smart. Not too slow for me. You smart in a lot. But you know, initially I was upset. But later on I realized that sometimes we have to be smart, it depends on where you are. You have to be smart. So I, I copied a lot from him. He was so nice. Kennedy was a very nice guy. He loved his nieces and nephews. In fact, it was a plan for us to come and visit him. But thanks to the almighty corona, it never got us here with our children to come and visit. Them. So we're planning to come and visit my sister-in-law and the kids so we have, have, have fun. But it didn't happen like that. But we thank God. We give it all to God. He knows best. The Sunday before he died on Tuesday, he called me and said, are you not going to Ghana with me? I said, really? I have said you schedule, so I don't think I can make it. I'm going for say you said, oh, come on, let's go. I wish I had gone with him. At least mm. that would have been my last time mm. seeing him. But I, it didn't happen like that. And we talked on the phone. Whilst I was talking, somebody came on my line. And then I cut him off. I said, I'll call him back. Least did I know that this was the last time I would ever hear my brother's voice. Mm. But every time I think of it, I said, God, why didn't I record that day when we were talking? Like we say, man proposes and God disposes. So I give it all to God. We thank God. Openi, you gave no one a last farewell, nor ever said goodbye due to your sudden nature of death. He's battled with sickness for a while, I mean, on and off, but I think he's in a good place now. I will just take it, take consolence from God that he is in a good place. You were born before we knew it, and only God knows why. A million times we will miss you. A million times we will cry. In our hearts, you hold a place no one else can ever fill. Bro, no one else can ever fill your, your, your place in our life. If roses grow in heaven, Lord, pick a bunch, of our, a bunch for us and place them in our brother's arms and tell him, they are from us because remembering him is easy. We always remember him. We do every day, but there is an ache, an ache in our hearts. There's an ache in our hearts that will never heal. We love you beyond words, and you will be missed beyond measure. We hope that your memories will bring peace. Brethren, let's, let's remember my brother and let his memory bring peace and love among all of us and even those beyond. Because nobody knows what happens to them. Open your door for them to try to do it. When you are in power, you will be missed dearly. Thank you, guys. Yes, I have a question. I'm <laughs> <laughs>
who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a trumpet call to God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, our encouragement to one another is with these words. May your gentle so rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to have a tribute um, from a friend, Mr. Principal. God 
that they have become independent. He wanted to see them through their marriages, which I believe God has ordained for them before the foundation of the earth. The seed of righteousness has already been sown, and it shall come to pass. Open ye love children. Open ye love children. And was passionate to have more kids, but a regular stopped him. <laughs> I believe we will be equal by now. The last we saw each other when, when I was called um, in the house and I was with the ambulance crew who took over his life to revive him. He made it through the hospital and came up later. He died peacefully to shave the enemy as he wouldn't like to put a burden on the family. He left good memories behind with three beautiful girls and a loving wife. He supported the Liverpool club with a logo which I have bought for him that you will never walk alone. Or pay him play drum like Mr. Oli said for the church and always love the Lord. God will keep your family in safe and sound mind because you trusted him. Goodbye bro, the God which did bless you. So we'll meet again at this session. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Shall we have the tribute of state of the winter primary school? If they are not here, shall we have the tribute from the Tamar Prince Club? At 53, he was in many ways a very charming young man, full of life and the soul of a part. He was the heartbeat of our club and of course his family. He also loved the Lord, as many of you might have heard already. 
brother from Kumasi, a trailblazer, if I may say so. He would make arrangements with, with hospitals in London with a view of obtaining medical equipment for our home city's hospital. A man of great integrity, friendly, and tr a true family man, and very loyal to his friends and our club. Like many amongst his peers, who, after leaving secondary school, would embark on his life's journey filled with the ambition of finding a good, kind, charming, God-fearing wife to share his dreams with and build a family together. He found her in our beautiful sister, Eradua Chaymen Sanisafua, affectionately called the mother of our club. Sadly, God had other plans, and so on that fateful day, 16th November 2021, the Lord called our brother Hope. Do our way to question God, it hurts. We are heartbroken and find it difficult to accept that our brother is no longer with us. But when you would say as it is, it would often encourage us to spend our class mind and our time first in taking care of our members that we in need before considering to help others. This was after we had undertaken a number of charitable deeds for the Tema General Hospital Children's Ward. Like the old saying, charity begins at home. He spoke passionately to us less than two years ago, sharing his testimony of how God spared his life after coming close to death. He urged us to be grateful to God for the gift of life and thank God for sparing his life and wanting to do his all to serve the Lord by spreading his word. It is sad to say that ill health would deny him this new focus and that of being the best husband, father, brother, uncle, and a friend. The Lord came calling, saying, Son, I need you home now to serve me. Death comes without any warning, warnings, as we all know, like the thief in the night, who comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. But thank God, our Lord, who has come to give us life and give it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. May the good Lord and his comforter, the Holy Spirit, guide the family. May he watch over each of us, each one of us, and give us sufficient grace and strength to fulfill that which we have been tasked on earth, so that when God calls us home, we can make good account to him. Openi Safwa, you are the embodiment of honesty, integrity, loyalty, dedication, and devotion, a source of undying support and sustenance behind your wife and your children. Though we did not live to see your grandchildren, we are hopeful that the seeds sowed on earth will germinate and bear good fruits through your children so that your legacy would live on. As John 16.22 says, Therefore, you two have grief now, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. The year of Peni, the year. When you meet them from Unsiye, Die Edi Ameni, Rest in peace, my brother. Rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, folks, for the support. Great to have Brother George back, as I said, and by this and that. A year ago, he went to Ghana himself to say farewell to his dear mother and has remained there. We are so delighted that the Lord watched over you and pretend, uh, brought you back to us, and now you are with that, your group at the Chairman Association. And may the Lord continue to keep that um, movement that group going. Now we're going to have a tribute from uh, State Experimental at the uh, Primary School. Education as Faith Experimental this year, I so. And most of us were in the same class until we finished school. It was certain that we had one thing in common. 
are the manipulation of our element who gave this all to those who encountered him. We have known him for over 40 years. He was everyone's friend, and we grew to love and respect him deeply through his passion for sports. I, Temo Teres. Whenever I think of him, I remember how numerous, witty, and clever he, was, he has. Most of our childhood memories of him are trained with traces of humor and laughter. On one occasion, we had to write a letter to a pen pal, and upon you concluded this by signing of yours, Joe Brasitamo. Our teacher was puzzled and asked who Joe Brasitamo was. Upon you raised his hand and responded, it was Joe Brasitamo. The entire class started chanting, Joe Brasitamo. It was so much fun to be with him. He loved to laugh and have fun. Open me, as we bid you farewell, we focus on the content on the memorable things which you did and how your life impacted us. We pray the Father to keep you in his bosom till we meet again. Then we pray to you, J.A. Lawrence and Safwa, a.k.a. Joe Prasifa. Thank you so much. Now we have a tribute from the in-laws. They are here. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. My name is Fonimba Chilemason. I stand before you today on behalf of my brothers and sisters. Thank you to open it. Twilight of evening bell, and after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness or fear when I am back. Afraid of Tennyson. Lawrence Opey, the sufferer, we call him Opey just as our baby sister did. We were elated when you were introduced to us as our baby sister's fiance. And our joy knew no bounds when you finally tied him out. You were such a gentleman, a calm with all about you. You cannot believe that we are standing here today to read your feelings. When we heard the terrible news, we were in utter shock and couldn't believe our ears. We were looking forward to spending Christmas and New Year with you. But alas, it could not be so. Indeed, death has dealt us an icy blow. But we take solace in the fact that we serve the Lord. And know that one day we shall meet in heaven. We appreciate the marital place you have with our sisters. And your love for your daughters, our nieces. You will forever be in our hearts. Myself, my name is Chen Nelson. This is Lucia Pieru. Miss Julia Chen Nelson. Mr. Prince Chen Nelson. Mrs. Fisher Chen Nelson. Prophet Alice Chen Nelson. And Mr. Kingsley Chen Nelson. Bid you eternal rest in the person of our Lord. Fair you will. That we say each other. Open you, open you, Thank you. Thank you. Shall we have the tribute from the Pedia Pubos family? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Pedia Pubos family. After that, we will have Ernest and Sam, and the children's tribute to the final one. Thank you. 
Today is the day that the Lord has been made to rest. For the Lord has called him to glory. We may find this difficult to comprehend, but we hold on to our faith and trust in the plan that God has for us. Today we remember his kindness and gentleness. Gentleness breeds peace, calm, and simplicity of character. It is not volatile or abrupt in its response. These are qualities Lawrence embodied, qualities we can all learn from Lawrence. Lawrence's death was sudden, it shocked us. But what I know is that he lived a happy life with his beautiful wife, Orlando, and his lovely daughters. We will be forever grateful to have known him. Goodbye to a gentle, genuine, and sweet soul. Rest in happy peace. Thank you. Shall we have the next one in this and sun? Thank you. 
but it shows how emotional you are. The Lord strengthen you. Bless you. Bless you. Ah. Now, shall I have the children here?
It's great for dad and our brother and our friend uh, um, to know, um, of course, being a born again Christian, we believe that he's alive, although his earthly remains are here with us. But it will be so encouraging to say something kind to your mom. Thank God for the easiness with which we are connected all over the world through technology. So if there's a kind word to send to that brother, to that sister, to that friend, it is better to do it now before something like this happens. Great to pay tributes at funerals. But what a kind word would do to that boss of yours, to that pastor of yours, to that friend of yours, just to say, I like the way you do things. Thank you for being kind. Thank you for being a friend. I'm sure all of us have committed friends and family with us. And so tonight, what about a, a kind word through that text message or a phone call? I like what the sister said. She wished she had recorded that last conversation that she had with her brother, and she wished perhaps she had not cut off the call. Pray in the name of Jesus that we all borrow and learn from what is being shared. Amen? I want us to remember our brother. I'm going to ask us to stand and just observe a moment's silence. A moment of silence. And after that, we will proceed with the program. Let's just try and remember what the children might have said, what the in-laws, what the church, and all the tribute. Just remember something that you are going to take away from here this afternoon. Shall we be silent for a moment? children will know that indeed dad and his legacy 
continue to live on through them. May, be, may the peace of God that transcends all understanding be upon their minds and upon their hearts, oh God. A year from now, two years from now, five years from now, may they look back and know that the Lord has not left them. For you promised that you will not leave your disciples and your followers comfortless. And at the right time, the dream that we marked out of the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that suddenly there was a mighty rushing wind and your spirit filled that place where they were. I pray that that experience will be the experience of the widow and the children and the loved ones that are gathered. Those that are watching online, Father, I pray that your spirit will just meet them where they are. Doubtless there will be those that are mourning for their loved ones that are watching, that are here, that might watch later on. Father, come for them and draw them near to you. For those who have not yet made their peace with you, precious Lord, draw them near unto you. Let them be willing to surrender their life to you just as Openi did at some point in his life. May souls be saved. May testimonies be heard at the end of it all. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Shall we have the song that is on now? The day is over whilst we are still standing. Shall we sing that after which we will have our fourth, our third, and our fourth Bible reading? Now the day is over. Now, this I say, brethren, 
that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Mm. Yeah. 55. O oh death, where is your sting? And O oh Hades, where is your victory? This is the word of the Lord. Amen. family and our brother whose funeral we are serving. Apostle, would you like to come? Please. Thank you, sir.
two, I also want to honor our dear brother, Mr. Prince of Poco. I know Chef Emerson was going to have known me in this nation for a long time. I first time to open him in South Africa for three, four years now. And when somebody is sick or hospital, I'm there. But this, I was somewhere helping Pharaoh do something in the north. So I couldn't be there. But Mr. Poco was there in the hospital. Mr. Poco. All we have to tell you can go. The next time you go there, he's there. So Mr. Prince of Poco, I salute you for all your help. And of course, all of you, because since it happened, I've seen people coming home, helping, supporting, and I'm, I'm sure she will thank you all herself. So on behalf of Mrs. Disappoint, the children also, we salute all of them and thanks to all of you. All right, as I said, I'm going to do this short and maybe five, seven minutes. Most at time during funeral like this, the scriptures we all read are mostly the scriptures we use. And one of them is the first Thessalonians chapter, uh, chapter 4, 13 to 18. That therefore comfort one another with these things. Comfort one another with these things. What was the comfort about? It's about the fact that there is hope after death. Yes. So we should comfort one another with these things. But today, I want to push it, this message that we all hear always. I want to push it a little bit. Push it a little bit. Now, I want to push it in the context of critical thinking. I like critical thinking. Usually, churches and pastors are accused that we don't appreciate critical thinking. Now, I'm going to prove this for a reason. I'm a student of theology or philosophy. That is critical thinking. I'm a student of psychotherapy in the area of cognitive behavior therapy and rational emotive behavior therapy. I'm also a student of law, at least I have a postgraduate degree from the University of Westminster. So I'm also a student of law. So I appreciate critical thinking. So this is what I want us to do. Just I want us to think a little bit about this God we have been singing about. This God we have been praising about. This God we are saying that a time is going to come that we are saying and reading that will join our dear brother, Mr. Insafua. The question then becomes, that means we are anticipating that on the parousia, there are two resurrections. Bible talks about two resurrections, first and second resurrection. The first one takes place at the rapture. Even that one is in the stages, at the parousia or the rapture. And the second one, after what, the millennium. Do you know what that means? That means people were dead about 1,000 years ago. People were dead over 2,000 years ago. People who had plane crash, who were burnt in fire, Christians, both believers and unbelievers, those who died in the sea, and some of the people died in the sea, apparently, some of them being eaten by fish. That means when it comes to science, there are particles, whether atoms or whatever molecules or whatever protons, whatever particle scattered all over the world. Assume a fish ate some part of a body that was drawn in the sea in England, and the fish found itself in Africa. So let's be critical. The word critical thinking simply means to evaluate and to analyze. The reason why there's so much stupidity in the prophetic is because there's no critical thinking. But the Bible tells us that we should judge prophecy. The word judge is a legal terminology that judges use. In other words, after analyzing all the parties, what they have said, and all the uh, legal, uh, litigants, they have to make a final decision. It's called judgment. So the Bible says that in prophecy, we should judge it. So let's judge this particular encouragement we all hear, that time will come. Let us analyze it a little bit. In every system or in the universe, there are systems, there are structures, there are uh, uh, procedures, there are protocols, there are modus operandi, there are eight parties, there are paradigms. So let's look at it. If this God, we are, we are saying Christians, that is going to raise people who have been dead 2,000 years ago. Particles and atoms scattered. If this God is going to raise up 
People were dead thousand years ago, hundred years ago. Then my question is, can God raise someone who is dead for one year? No, just think it. I want you to, because perhaps it's better to go to a house of funeral than a house of party. Party is good, but more. Why? Because over there we contemplate, we think. Do you know about three minutes one bit? Over there we think, we reflect, we contemplate. So the question is, I'm trying to bring that. Do we really believe this God? Do we believe that God can do all, all things? Do we believe that because what we say that in, in this life only we have hope that we have all men mm. who is miserable. Yeah. So if we, if we are believing that we should believe that indeed if there is a resurrection and the dead will rise up, then the first, thing, first person then comes. Are we ready for that? Because for the first resurrection it's about those who give their life to Jesus. And have you given your life to Jesus? I like it to pay the last Sunday. We didn't want to come to church. But when he came to church, we had a communion. We had communion first Sunday of the month. But it was the second Sunday or third Sunday. I don't do communion. But that day, I went to my garage, took all the communion staff. We did the communion when he came to church. And after that, he said, church was so exciting today. That was the last time we saw him. He said, church was exciting today. So my point is, let's analyze. If this God can do that, bring all these parties together, resurrect this body, that this God is awesome and is powerful. That also means that we don't only wait for resurrection, but in this life also, God can still meet our needs. God can encounter us. It does not mean that every sickness has to end up in death. I don't believe in that. People who have followed my ministry know that. One of the things that pains me, and it's a, it's a fact, it's a truth, that I didn't get the opportunity to go to the hospital. I've pastored 24 years of this church, and by the grace of God, I'm being honest with you, this is the first time we have me a phone now. I've not done it, because for me, I believe in the rapture. If God can do it in two thousand years, why can't God in this one? Yes, it's fine. Everybody will die. 100 years, that's fine. But personally, I don't give up when a young person dies. There's nothing like God has taken a two-year-old child. There's no joy in that. As much as we don't have access in everything, we must think about this God we are talking about. Can God do everything? Yes. For me, I'm being honest with you, from now to cemetery, if he, raise, if he rise from the dead, I will be surprised. Amen. That, that is me. Because... At least I'm a theologian, I'm a lawyer, and I'm also a psychotherapist. So I understand all this. I'm not a sentimental person. I think very well. But I'm bringing us to that place that we should think about this God we serve. If we say he's God, and if there's a rapture or a resurrection, then we must believe in his salvation. Amen. That he gives eternal life. Amen. He gives the life of God. Amen. We must also believe that our loved ones can be healed. One disappointment does not nullify. Fairly one exam does not mean you cannot pass another exam. So we should have hope now on this earth and now and, and in the rapture. Hallelujah, shall we pray? Amen. Oh, thank you. Jesus. Amen.
give me the opportunity, just 10 seconds. You want to put your life right with God. If you have not given your life to Jesus, this is the time to do that. If you're already born again, you know Jesus, you're in that relationship. But you need to rededicate your life to God. This is the time. I believe in this God. And I ask for more grace. As you give your life to Jesus, you renew your life. May this same grace that saves continue to keep you and strengthen you. And I release more grace to the family. And there's everybody who is sick here. I release healing grace upon your body. Let there be a quickening. Let there be a healing. In the name of Jesus. Father, be glorified. As never before. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. We are about to pay our last respects as a uh, uh, program, but just just before also uh, uh, steps back, let me see would you, the regular and the family, would you like to stand and want to pray while the gentlemen are coming forward? Shall we all stand? Shall we just support them? What do you want just pray God for to be on the right now for the May the ancient of days, the one who loved us so much and therefore gave us his beloved son, by his spirit may you receive God's comfort. Mm -hmm. By his spirit may you be quickened. Mm -hmm. By his spirit may you have sound mind. Mm -hmm. and, and by his spirit let peace travail and prevail in every aspect of your life Amen. and in this atmosphere Amen. in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Amen. Amen.
Ay, no me da un combate. No me da un combate, güey. 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 Oh, yo, I know, I know, I know, I know, Your face here, Thank <laughs> you. 